super grateful to be here. Um, I am Chan McClellan, and this is my talk on compiling resilience, how to present ourselves from becoming cybersecurity's weakest link. So to get started, what, what am I doing all right? Um, I'm not asking that as an actual question right now. I'm not posing that as a legitimate question to you all here. But that's something that I've said to myself for something along those lines many times before in my life. Um, if you think about it, how many times have you sat down in a meeting and tried to kind of figure out what, what's going on, why you're there, what's supposed to be there? Maybe you have to pull up your calendar, or pull up some notes, and, and kind of figure out why are you sitting there in that room? And for me, my memory, you know, sometimes I draw a blank. And I found myself doing that a lot this past spring, if I'm being honest. Um, part, the awkward part was when I would sit down in those meetings and I couldn't even think of what was going on, why was I, why was I there and why I was in the room, there was a lot of people staring at me, um, expecting me to say something, kind of like everyone right now is staring at me at this moment. And it was because I was the one that was supposed to be leading those meetings oftentimes, but my brain, it just wouldn't work. And it's an experience that I wasn't really, wasn't really comfortable with. I didn't really know what was going on, but day after day, I'd remember going to meetings or different events and just, I couldn't get my brain to work. I couldn't function. Um, it happened over and over again. And frankly, it kind of worried me. You know, I'd always been pretty sharp. always had a really good memory. So struggling like this, um, it was weird. I was embarrassed, and frankly, I was burning out, and I didn't know how to accept that. So how did I stick myself in that situation? You know, it, it wasn't lack of sleep. I mean, I tried getting good sleep for a couple of weeks. It didn't change anything. I was still mentally dragging, and even though, you know, I felt great physically. So class-wise, I was, I was a little busy. I took 21 credits um, last spring, so a little, little busy with that. Um, I'm pretty used to a heavy course load, but there was a lot of demand there. Outside of class, I was busy helping out with the Student Organization for Cybersecurity at USU, running that. And that took a good chunk of my time every week, preparing, planning, execution, everything that goes into that. And I was organizing competitions, putting on conferences. I was competing nationally in different things. So generally, I found myself on campus from 8 a.m. to 10 or 11 p.m. every single day. Was a little exhausting professionally. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd wrapped up a seven month internship, was finally getting back out there. Many of you probably relate to the experience of searching for a job, you know, the endless grind, applying, tailoring your resume, apply again. If it goes well, you go through interviews and technical interviews. So professionally, I was, I was pretty swamped at the same time. Um, I was still writing CFPs, still speaking at conferences. And then uh, to put the cherry on top of everything, I still had, you know, rent, tuition, food, bills to pay. So I had to work. I was doing three jobs or a handful of jobs. I TA three uh, graduate courses at the university, and I was doing some contract work for real estate homes uh, for a real estate um, home market here in Utah. So I was pretty swamped. I mean, it was a busy spring semester. It was a lot. Looking back, I know why I was burning out, but what I couldn't understand is what what I thought I saw in other people, where people were doing the exact same thing, but they weren't struggling like me. They seemed to be fine. They were, they were carrying on like they weren't being a So for me, I started to realize that, that burnout, um, it was catching up to me. It was after years of just this prolonged stress that I was failing to function in even just day-to-day -day tasks. So burnout, it's more than just exhaustion. It's kind of a critical cognitive break that affects everyone, especially those in cybersecurity. So... Um, oh, to finish up introductions on myself before I get ahead of myself. Um, I'm rising senior at USU. I love skiing in the mountains, all sorts of stuff like that. I have spoken in a few places, the SAN CTI Summit in DC this year, and then just a few months ago, for many of you that went to the SANS um, Digital Forensics Incident on Response Summit in Salt Lake, I was there as well. So love to be involved in the community. The last um, cyber work I did was an awesome internship with CrowdStrike. I was on their advanced threat analytics cell, working mostly in an e-crime related activity on the Overwatch um, hunt team. So super cool, super cool. I've loved all the, the experiences that I've had. All right, this is a really, really long title for a US Department of Defense um, study that was conducted that I'll be referencing a lot throughout this PowerPoint. Um, so when you see quotes, stuff like that, a lot of the research that I pulled from comes from these people. It's a cool study. 
It was done across four NSA locations looking at cyber operators. They had 126 tactical cyber operators that they were studying and testing, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool. From that study, a lot of interesting stuff came out of it, um, like knowing that operator stress is a common, persistent, and disabling effect of cyber operations and an important risk factor for performance, safety, and employee burnout. So, we know burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. A um, couple other quick, quick takeaways, quick facts from that study. Um, their, their change, their delta for pre-operation to post-operation fatigue was over 16% increase, 12% increase in frustration amongst the operators as they were involved in incidents response. So cybersecurity professionals have scored strong efficacy or the sense that they're adequately executing their duties than even frontline medical professionals who also suffer from burnout at high rates. It can be extremely challenging to turn off that sense of obligation even during periods where workers aren't officially on the clock. Analysts may either attempt to shut down, circumvent alerts, so discrepancy enhancing, or they may attempt to keep on top of them despite their inability to do so, known as discrepancy reducing. Both are super stressful, both are, are super difficult situations to be put in. So, super cool study, I'll be, I'll be referencing it a lot, and when you see different quotes, that's, that's where I'm pulling from. But, looking, looking beyond that, that's the, that's the Department of Defense's perspective on, on burnout and, and stress. What, what is the industry looking like? Well, if you look at statistics for how so many cybersecurity experts um, attribute breaches, between 74% and 95% and are, are the rough figures where they attribute it to human error. Let's say even just 75% of breaches are due to human error. How much more susceptible are we to breaches when the cyber defenders in charge of protecting us are exhausted when they're burnt out, right? How much worse does that make our defensive posture are, and how much of a problem is that? From the DOD, they, they said cybersecurity professionals must be highly attentive to their work, and conspicuous failures can often be traced to a single error, right? Increasing the burden responsibility even on low-level employees. The vigilance required of the job is equivalent to that required of air traffic controllers, medical professionals alike. People who strongly identify with those responsibilities are more likely to suffer a burnout due to the intense internal motivation to fill them, even when it's not realistic. So let's give you a quick lay of the land. That's kind of looking at the, the industry and some different stats and different perspectives out there. Um, but before we do that, let's just step back and everybody think people in your circle, maybe it's yourself, a friend of yours, who have you seen kind of go through burnout or be affected by this? Uh, we all know somebody, we all know somebody that's been burned out and it sucks to see that, right? It's, it's not, it's not something you like to see people go through. So uh, Microsoft's global workforce study, in tw they surveyed 20,000 people um, in 2022 from 11 different countries, and they found that 48% of employees and 53% of managers report that they're already burned out. From Sophos, a recent survey indicated that 85% of respondents from six Asian Pacific countries were suffering from burnout, and 90% saw an increase in burnout last year. A CyberArk survey found that 59% of professionals were burned out, and Mimecast found that 54% of professionals in cybersecurity thought ransomware attacks were leading to deteriorating mental health. Um, from ThreatConnect, they had a survey that found that most cybersecurity analysts only lasted in their position for a maximum of three years, and approximately 27% of the employees that uh, turnover was attributed to stress. So, I mean, just looking at some of these statistics, thinking about the industry, thinking about different perspectives on the problem, it's kind of, it's pretty doom and gloom, right? Um, it sounds insurmountable. It sounds like a widespread problem. We're all going to burn out and none of us are going to be in this room in five years if, if you were to read these studies and believe it, right? But I don't think that's the case. And I'd argue that there's much more that we can do about this problem about burnout in cybersecurity. So... First, we have to address what is the problem. Like, what, what is burnout in cybersecurity? What, what does it look like? Um, by raise of hands, who's ever heard this before? Humans are the weakest link in cybersecurity, right? Wow, every hand in the room just went up. We have all heard that before. Um, that quote meaning inherently that humans are a cybersecurity risk, right? Is that not what, it's, what it implies? So if so, burnout is not just a personal problem that we struggle with. It's an actual cyber risk. I think the quote should probably be revised to something along the lines of humans are often cited as the weakest link in cybersecurity, but in reality, burnout culture is what weakens us. 
cybersecurity, we often treat it as such a technical problem. The human factors are a significant part of that. But when we, when we go to conferences, when we go to meetings, trainings, or events, there's such a large focus on mitigating and protecting against the technical things. Vulnerabilities, tools, program design, um, leadership skills. We talk about a lot about the rest of the cybersecurity aspects out there, but we don't focus much of our discussion on how to help ourselves and how to defend ourselves from becoming a, a less capable cyber professional in whatever space or capacity you operate in. Human errors like misclicks, right? Overlooked warnings, bad password practices, they lead to breaches. But everyone in this room doesn't make those silly mistakes, right? We're all, we're all professionals. We all know how to not get fished. But the Department of Defense reminds us that operator stress is a persistent and disabling factor in cyber operations, contributing to employee burnout and increased risk. We ourselves become a problem when we are burned out. So stress and burnout in cybersecurity, it's not a technical problem. It's not a bug to be fixed. It's not a vulnerability to patch. It's an innately human problem. So let's quickly talk about the psychological elements of burnout that play into the bigger picture here. Um, cynicism, that's, it's simply employees that disassociate from procedures that play into the bigger picture here, right? Things that they view as, as ineffective um, for exhaustion, that's mental fatigue that leads to lapses in judgment. It's likely the most important consequence that results in a lack of mental bandwidth for dealing with cybersecurity procedures, and even when threats, and even when dealing with threats, when when they actually show up, when there's actually something going on. And diminished self-efficacy is when employees feel inadequate, they lose their confidence in handling cyber threats. They feel that their skills are insufficient in the face of a constant onslaught of problems. So keeping those in mind, let's dive into some insights into burnout and in the context of cybersecurity. So from the Department of Defense, they, they state that burnout is an occupational phenomenon and cyber fatigue is a specific form of disengagement caused by overexposure to cybersecurity demands. Cybersecurity fatigue is a form of work disengagement specific to cybersecurity. It manifests as a weariness or aversion to cybersecurity related place behaviors or advice and occurs as a result of prior overexposure to cybersecurity related work demands and training. We define cybersecurity fatigue as a weariness, aversion, or manifested lack of motivation in regard to cybersecurity, which exists not solely as a result of individual predispositions, but primarily because of prior overexposure to cybersecurity training and workplace related demands. So Looking, looking at that, looking at the connection between the fatigue that we feel and experience and the psychological elements of burnout, how do you know if you, you yourself, or somebody that you know has, has entered the quote-unquote burnout zone, right? How do you know if somebody's struggling? Well, there's a lot of obvious signs, right? A lot of symptoms. Um, for attitudinal, attitudinal type fatigue, um, this is where simply an individual has a negative effect relating to cybersecurity, right? It can be an attitude that includes feelings of emotional exhaustion, moral disengagement, meaning they don't really have a tendency to uh, care about doing the right thing anymore. It's cynicism, um, both of which are regarding the value of cybersecurity and their ability to cope with their fans. On the other side of the equation, you have cognitive type fatigue. Um, this is referring to the limited capacity of individuals have to make decisions or to cope with increased cognitive load. In situations where employees have depleted their cognitive resources, they will fall back on impulsive and intuitive and biased decision-making, or sometimes avoid decision-making all entire, altogether. In the case of cybersecurity, this could mean dismissing security warnings or basing trust and legitimacy of emails to a gut reaction. Cognitive type fatigue is related to the internal state of the employee at the moment that an action is taken, and therefore it's somewhat transient, right? Different decisions may be made, whether it's early in the day, versus towards the end of the day because the employee might be more exhausted and, and therefore suffering from cognitive, cognitive fatigue. Oh, I just pulled up a menu that I did not want. Sorry. Still learning to use computers. It's, it's kind of new to me here. So, yeah, it's a combination of some or all these elements that indicate cyber burnout um, from psychological elements to, to the different symptoms of fatigue. It's really easy to spot somebody in our lives that's burnt out. It's ironically a lot harder to spot it within ourselves. So what are the consequences of, of cyber fatigue, cyber burnout, cyber stress in our lives? 
you know, what are the stakes? Why do we even care? What effect does this really have on our work, on the works that we do, and the world? Um, check, here's a great... Check, scene. check, 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 check. Uh, that one's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's dive into a quick example. Um, research indicates that burnout employees are more likely to click on phishing links, right? Ignore security warnings or misconfigure systems. Looking at the 2023 3CX incident, it's a great example of that. So alert Ooh. fatigue, which is a form of cognitive fatigue, um, led analysts here to dismiss valid alerts as false positives, which resulted in a large-scale breach. Um, the, the incident was a significant supply chain attack that compromised the widely used 3XC voice over IP software, which provides communication services to businesses. The attack involved threat actors infecting software and malware, which then distributed to customers via legitimate software updates. Once installed, um, the malware allowed attackers to establish command and control over compromised systems. Oh, we'll take... Uh, oh, just in case, sorry. I thought you wanted to switch. Um, so while users did report receiving um, warnings from Sentinel-1 as early as March 22nd, um, both users and the 3CX support team kind of assumed that detection was a false positive, possibly due to experiencing, quote, numerous false alarms in the past. Kind of a big deal. Um, about a week later, CrowdStrike hunters um, were the first to determine that detection was malicious activity coming from the app, and it was not a false positive, false positive, which which kind of led to the disclosure and the breach. And it was a big it was a big impact in discussion about the breach. They said that quote most likely the initial lack of urgency around the issue was influenced by desensitization to alerts. So it was a huge problem for for this company, and it affected all of the downstream companies that they were tied to. And it was a hugely avoidable problem for them to deal with. I mean, the aftermath of the breach, um, 3XC had to recommend to all of its customers that they uninstall their application software from all machines, all Windows and Mac computers that, that had it on it. They also recommended that they, they go out and get antivirus or EDR solutioning to, to start looking for um, the latest signatures for, for malware in their environments and in their networks. So... Big, big impact that they suffered from there. And we can see that burnout creates a reactive security environment where constant firefighting takes precedence over strategic planning, increased risk. And it wasn't that the analysts in this situation were not capable, that they could not do their job. Rather, they were fatigued and burnout. Um, it caused them to make the wrong call repeatedly. All right. Uh, let's look at the consequences from what the research tells us. So the Department of Defense, um, their stress study on cyber operators across the NSA, they, they saw that cyber stress is a physical and emotional reaction to certain types of situations. It's very subjective. Everyone experiences it differently. Acute stress is the most common form of stress resulting in that fight or flight response. Um, however, once the stressor goes away, so do the symptoms. Easy, under, easy to understand. Episodic stress it's when acute stress occurs frequently, you do not have enough time to recover from the stress event to event, resulting in lower tolerance and higher sensitivity to the stressful events. Chronic stress is the long-term stress, right? That results from enduring situations where you lack control over the outcome and can have serious effects on physical and mental health. Um, episodic and chronic stress contribute to the increased operational risk and employee burnout. So we can see there's this connection between stress your cognitive workload, and increased likelihood errors in the high-demand professions like cybersecurity. Um, from, from Greenlee's work, they found that the cognitive workload, as it was increased and as and stress was increased during a network intrusion analysis, it directly coordinated with how impaired and impacted their performance was. So, in other findings, in a, in a U.S. Air Force study, they identified factors like shift work and long hours as significant contributors to burnout among cyber warfare operators. Stress is compounded by burnout, and burnout is compounded by stress. It's a vicious cycle. It's easy to see. It's easy to identify, but it's really difficult to, to disrupt and to break out of. So what's, what's the direct impact of, of these consequences? If we look at the industry, um, a new study from Black Fog reveals that nearly a quarter of CISOs and IT security decision makers they're actively considering leaving their roles, with 93% citing overwhelming stress as that key driver. Um, according to their research, the, the pressure is immense. Nearly 98% of respondents um, re reported working beyond their contracted hours, with the average CISO clocking about nine hours extra per week, and about 15% of, of respondents over 16 hours a week. Um, that, that work overload is not sustainable. It's not sustainable for anyone. It's leading to burnout. 
with many security leaders ready to exit the industry, this turnover is creating significant risks for our organizations. The pressure on cybersecurity teams, um, as it increases, it creates operational risk and makes organizations more vulnerable to attacks. The constant need to respond to threats, it's kind of created a reactive security environment where our leaders are always putting out fires along with the frontline people. And they're not taking the time that they need to focus on developing long-term strategies to, de to strengthen defenses. So it it's exasperates the problem and it continues to, to get worse, which in turn increases the risk of, of human error and cyber vulnerabilities, the more stressed and the more overworked we become. Research also highlights more concerning trends. So nearly half, 45% of all the respondents to the study admitted to using drugs or alcohol as a means of alleviating work pressures. Um, meanwhile, 69% reported withdrawing from social activities. These kind of coping mechanisms, um, withdrawing and, and turning to, to other ways to escape the work pressure, um, they reflect the intensity of the pressures of cybersecurity professionals face daily. And they illustrate the severity of this burnout crisis that, that we are suffering and that we're trying to work through in our different organizations. So burnout doesn't just affect the individual, it kind of creates a systemic vulnerability in our cybersecurity defenses as stress increases the likelihood of human error skyrockets. So let's switch gears now, now that we've dissected the problem, looked at the different aspects and contributing elements to cyber risk and cyber burnout. And I mean, there, there's no real sense deliberating a problem, right? If we won't also put effort forward towards finding a solution to it. So first off, some individual strategies. Um, we should shift from reactive to proactive mental health management, right? Encourage your professionals, encourage yourself to monitor your own stress and burnout levels regularly. Just as you might, you know, monitor for security threats or different alerts. Um, we, we should create a self-detection system that we can use to check in on our own emotional and physical well-being um, before our burnout becomes severe. We should create boundaries, right, for always, always on work culture that many of us have seen. Cyber professionals often feel pressure to be constantly vigilant, right? Even after you clock out, you, you kind of are always watching, you always feel responsible for, for work. But it's super important to, to have those periods, those digital detox you know, times where you can get away from that work and refresh yourself. And self-efficacy through continuous learning, that's to help combat learning or combat feelings of inadequacy, right? Foster continuous learning in your life, find opportunities to boost your confidence and consider like short manageable resources, like a 10 minute training session, 10 minute um, micro moment, something to, to help you um, work through and continue to develop your skills, which will in turn boost your confidence and, and help you. So. For organizations, um, there's a few different strategies that would be great to implement, from my opinion. Cognitive offloading systems, right? Implement some of these to, to recognize cybersecurity teams often suffer from information overload. I mean, we know it, it introduces errors, it increases stress. So we should be introducing automated tools or assistance and systems that help filter and prioritize alerts to kind of offload some of that burden um, cognitively for, for analysts. Um, promoting a culture of psychological safety. That's, that's simple for leadership to just build an environment where employees feel safe to discuss their mental health, right? Without fear of being judged, without backlash, where they can kind of come forward and, and be honest with themselves and with others, how they're performing, how they're doing. I mean, anonymous check-in channels, other, other feedback like that can be a, a good way to, to implement that. For work management tools, um, simply it's just introduce resources, you know, planning tools that allow for workload balancing, helping to make sure that nobody in your organization or nobody on the team is, is overwhelmed and overworked, kind of share the load equally. Um, from Dr. Blythe's perspective, he, he said that it's important to ensure that employees have enough resources and support to handle their workload. Psychological burnout occurs because of the job demands are too high. This can be too much workload, too much risk, stress, or just the simple demands of the day-to-day -day job mixed with too few of job resources. Turning to leadership strategies, um, for leaders, there's, there's a lot of strategies. There's a handful of things that they can do to make top-down impacts in their organization that, that have rippling effects. Um, burnout prevention initiatives, so leadership, um, they can create programs that actually turn out burn, target burnout prevention, wellness programs, resiliency building, and, and implement that in peer support networks throughout their organization. 
um, as far as addressing the other side for, for cognitive fatigue and attitudinal fatigue. Um, there's, there's a lot you can do. You can, you can encourage or connect your employees with resources for um, recovery exercises during dirty pork periods or engaging creative problem solving tasks help divert their mental energy and refocus in between their, their kind of onslaught of, of problems that they're working through. Also encourage them, right? Keep, keep positivity in the workplace. Keep a good attitude about the work that you're doing. As a leader, it reflects in, in those that you're leading. And emotional support systems, any, anything that you can implement that, that helps support them and provides unity to your team will, will prevent somebody from feeling isolated and alone and overburdened and like they don't have anyone that they can turn to to help them with that load. So... What is, what is the goal, right? What's the goal of mitigation and control for cyber burnout? It's ultimately to create a, a cybersecurity culture within your workplace that's, that's centered on humans, right? Because burnout isn't an innately human problem that we're, we're dealing with. Organizations, they need to foster collaboration, create a support environment where everyone feels valued in their role and knows that their contributions to the team are important. Um, there's also programs like CyberMinds, um, it's an Australian initiative that they, they demonstrate the importance of mental health for cybersecurity professionals, and it's designed with input from other cybersecurity um, professionals who experience, experience the same problems and are, are working to, to remediate them and, and work on them. So finally, if you see or hear a competitor doing well in, in taking care of their staff, they're mitigating churn and burnout well on their team, and they, they just seem to have a really strong workforce, reach out to them, right? Ask them what they're doing talk to them and see how you can differently take care of those underneath your leadership, underneath your stewardship and help them be, be better prepared and, and more successful employees. Right? We're all going to win together in this community. And if somebody's doing great, if they're having a lot of positivity and wins, replicate it, follow what they're doing and implement it. So the cybersecurity burnout crisis, it's, it's not just a personal thing. It's not just a leadership issue. It's, it's truly a threat to the entire organization. Um, by addressing burnout, businesses protect their security teams, they strengthen their defenses. So I encourage you to take action, you know, evaluate yourself, evaluate, the, evaluate those around you, and then act accordingly. Um, a few final thoughts in, in closing. The, the health of our talent, or your talent in this case, but our talent here together, is as much of a risk management is issue as it is a human resources issue. Um, by investing the right resources and creating a culture of support, organizations can ensure, ensure that their scissors and security teams are equipped not just to survive, but to thrive. I, I did cite my sources and they didn't fit on the page. So if you would like to look at the slides later, there's hundreds of studies in here. They're there. They're cool. And with that, I'd like to, to thank you guys for your time, for, for listening to me today and having me here at SaintCon. The organiz organizing team is amazing. The audio team is amazing. So super grateful to be here. I know we're kind of running behind on time. So probably Q&A a different time unless the other speakers here. Okay, we have short short amount of time if there are any questions. Maybe. I think that's yes. Are there any questions? If not, we can move to that after you can find me anywhere at the conference. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs>